Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to be showing you how to formulate a tanning lotion. Now, the tanning lotions are created largely using dihydroxyacetone, or DHA, which is a seemingly harmless white powder. The problem is this particular substance is very incompatible with a lot of the materials we commonly use, which means the ingredient selection you make for your lotion or sprays or other forms of products you might be trying to create can be made very difficult by this very incompatible white powder. DHA is so effective at producing a tanned effect to the skin because it reacts with amines, peptides and amino acids of the stratum corneum to produce brown polymers called melanidins. It's similar to the Maillard reaction. DHA can be very drying to the skin, so you need to use a significant proportion of emollients and humectants in your formulations to help balance its drying effect. Otherwise you can end up with very flaky skin that looks somewhat like brown lizard skin. Very undesirable from a consumer perspective. When used properly, DHA can help your skin develop a beautifully orange-brown effect within 6 to 24 hours. And this tan can last up to 7 days, another reason why you need to use humectants and emollient lipids so that you can keep the skin supple without sloughing off too soon or looking scaly. And this can then give longevity to the tanning product on your skin. The problem is what DHA doesn't like. Let's take a look at some of its incompatibilities. The first thing you need to stay away from is anionic emulsifiers, which means you need to create your formulations using non-ionic emulsifiers only. It's also not compatible with a lot of charged thickness such as carbama, sodium carboxymethylcellulose and magnesium aluminum silicate. They can all lead to the degradation of DHA. So you're better off using more suitable thickness such as hydroxyethylcellulose, methylcellulose and silica in your formulations. DHA is also incompatible with collagen, urea derivatives, amino acids and proteins that you might want to add to your formulation. This is because the DHA instead needs to react with the amino acids and proteins of your skin. So if you add these materials to your formulation, the DHA will start reacting with the components of your formulation rather than the skin of the user and they simply won't get the best results. It's also not compatible with metal oxides, which is a real problem when you want some instant colour. So you can't use iron oxides to help colour the product. It's also not compatible with zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which means if you want to create a DHA containing formula with sunscreen protective benefits, you'll need to choose other UV filters instead. Finally, DHA is really only stable between a pH of 4 and 6, which means the formulas you create need to fall within this pH range. But this is further complicated because you can't add alkali ingredients to your formulation at any time to adjust the pH. So if your formulation doesn't have a pH between 4 and 6, you can use citric acid to adjust the pH, but you can't use an alkalizing agent at any time time. So if it doesn't fall within that pH or can be adjusted using citric acid, you need to reformulate until it does fall within that pH range. And finally, the pH of these formulations will drop over time. So you need to make sure that any ingredients you're using can tolerate a more and more acidic pH environment without destabilizing. There is another tanning material out there you can use. It's called erythralose, but it has some drawbacks too. First of all, one of the good things, it comes in a liquid form. It also doesn't suffer from the same incompatibilities as DHA, but 
it's very sticky so you can't use much of it. It also takes longer for the tan to develop, usually about 24 hours before that tan starts to develop right through to two days. It does give a slightly more natural looking brown however, so you can use small amounts to help complement your DHA in a formulation. Now there is a tip I want to tell you before I get started, and that is how to get a better brown out of your DHA tanning product. Now DHA when applied to the skin will create an orange brown colour and the more DHA you use the more it will tend to look orange on very fair skin types. But you can disguise this through the use of FD&C colourants which you're going to see me use today. Now these help stain the very outer layers of the skin to be a better brown. Now this brown will last two to three days before the outer cells shed these are the cells that have been stained by the FD&C colorants to reveal the color that has developed because of the DHA alone. So it gives your consumer an instant brown. It also helps them during application to see where they have applied product or not, but it does tend to stain their fingertips because you want it to stain the skin on their body, but because they'll be applying with their fingertips, it does tend to stain them uh, with a higher color. So they can use gloves or wash their hands thoroughly after use to remove the excess staining effect. It does give the user a better brown on application and for up to three days and again the use of humectants and emollient lipids helps that skin stay supple for longer to give them that better brown for up to three days without the lizard or scaly looking effect that's very undesirable for consumers. So today I'm going to show you how to create a very moisturizing lotion product and how to stabilize a very high lipid input. Let's get started. First I have just measured out my water and my propane diol. Now I'm using propane diol because it's a very effective humectant but it's not sticky or tacky like glycerin. And you'll notice from the formula that I am using a relatively high proportion of this humectant material so that it helps hold moisture in the skin for a longer, more supple looking effect. Here I have already pre-measured out my lipid phase. Now to this I am just going to add my emulsifiers. Now as I mentioned, your emulsifier selection has to be done extremely well to help stabilize your product form and the relatively high lipid content I'm using. But still give a beautifully light skin feel on application. Users don't want these products to feel greasy, but they do need to be very moisturizing and moisture protecting because the DHA is very drying. I'm also going to be adding a polymeric emulsifier. In this case, I'm using Sepi Plus S. Whichever polymeric emulsifier you use, you do need to make sure it's compatible with DHA, as there's a lot of polymeric emulsifiers out there, but not many that are compatible with DHA. So check with your supplier if you want to use an, another material different to Sepi Plus S, or you can use Sepi Plus S as I'm using because it is compatible with DHA. So now I have my water phase with my high level of humectant and my oil phase with emulsifiers present. Now I'm going to heat the two phases and then combine together. Stir to combine. You can use high shear if your polymer will allow it. And then we need to wait for this to cool below 40 degrees before the next steps. When cooled below 40, the next step is to add the preservative and antioxidant. I'm going to give this a good stir and then we need to check and adjust the pH.
This next step is really important because DHA is so sensitive to so many factors. We need to make sure that the pH is of a compatible range before we add it, otherwise it could start degrading straight away. So we need to check and adjust the pH to be between 4 and 6 before adding the DHA and then once it's added and stirred through we need to check and adjust the pH again. This is really important because DHA is such a sensitive material and because it's compatible between a range of 4 and 6 and we also know that the pH will drop over time, we need to check and adjust this pH to be just below 6 on the day of manufacture. This formula has a DHA compatible pH so we can now add our DHA. Once thoroughly mixed and dissolved, we need to check pH again. As you can see, the addition of DHA has brought that pH down. But it's still within a DHA compatible range and it still suits the polymers and emulsifiers I've used in this formulation. Remember, you can't use alkalizing agents at any time in this formulation. So whatever pH it comes out at needs to be compatible with the DHA and any other gums, polymers or emulsifiers you're using in the formulation. And they need to allow for that pH drop over time. Now for another couple of very important additions. You need a good fragrance. The Maillard reaction, which DHA mimics, can be quite smelly. And it has a characteristic aroma that anyone who's ever used a tanning agent with DHA in it will know can be undesirable if not covered appropriately. Speak with your fragrance house or work with essential oil blends to cover this undesirable odor. The next thing we're going to add are some colorants. Now the type of brown you create is totally up to your target market and your brand developer. There are all sorts of browns you can create from an olive brown right through to a red brown or a maroon brown type of look. And this will also depend on the base color of the skin you're going to apply it to and the region where the product will be sold. For example, in the Mediterranean, they tend to favor more of an olive brown. I'm just gonna be making a standard brown today and you can adjust your color inputs to suit the region you'll be selling your product. Now remember, as with any emulsion containing emulsifying waxes, it will thicken up overnight. Because of the low input of emulsifying waxes, this will only thicken up a little, leaving you with a beautiful, easy to spread, light feeling tanning lotion. You could add some erythrolose to this formula, but remember not too much because it can feel quite sticky on application. And in this formula I've used quite a big percentage of DHA for a relatively strong tanning effect on skin that would be my colour. You might want to use less in a gradual tanning product or more if you want a more pronounced effect. But just remember the more DHA you use, the more you risk an orange effect on the skin if you don't use the right proportion of FDNC colorants to give that browner look to the product on application and for the first couple of days. Now I want to introduce you to a couple of tanning innovations that can help make your product work better or in a slightly different manner to what's out there. The first is Veggie Tan Premium. This is a synergistic combination of DHA and an alanomalanin like polymer. Another excellent innovation is Veggie Tan Gold. 
What makes this an interesting material is it's DHA formulated into a micro emulsion. So it's oil soluble. This means you can add this material directly into an anhydrous formulation, such as using combinations of oil based sunscreen agents for a really fantastic UV protection and tanning result. Another innovation is DHA Rapid. This is a synergistic mixture of DHA with troxorutin for faster tanning results. You can also use penetration enhancers like dimethyl isosorbide or ethoxydiglycol to help faster, more even penetration of DHA for more rapid results. Whether you want to use DHA on its own in combination with erythralose or one of these DHA innovations I've just mentioned, remember DHA has a lot of incompatibilities when you're putting it into a formulation and it will always cause drying of the skin so you need to counter that by using the right type of emollient lipids and humectants. My example formulation contains a high percentage of both to keep the skin supple but you'll need to adjust this to suit your target market and the region where you're selling the product. Finally remember that all important fragrance to cover the undesirable aroma that occurs when DHA develops in the skin and use your instant colorants wisely to help create an instant brown and more brown color to hide some of the orange undertones that high concentrations of DHA can cause. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on how to create a tanning product using DHA. Remember to formulate around all those incompatibilities. Ensure a final pH that's compatible with DHA and the other materials you've used and tan wisely. Happy formulating!